If you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, then you'll find it difficult to connect with others. And if you don't figure this out, this can negatively impact your social life. That's why today, I'm going to give you five tips to be yourself and not care what others say. I'm about to share with you the exact same process that I've used to become more outgoing and be able to put myself out there consistently. And if you want to be able to do the same thing, there's something important that you need to keep in mind. This is where my first step comes into play. To help me explain this to you, let me tell you a quick story. Growing up in the Philippines, I was raised by my elders to be very polite and obedient. I was told repeatedly to be respectful and be considerate of others. So wanting to be a good kid, that's exactly what I did. To make them happy, I followed their advice blindly. For me to fit in with others, I just remained quiet and did a lot of things without ever questioning them. At first, I didn't really see anything wrong with that. It wasn't until later on in my life that I realized the negative impact of my upbringing. Because I was just following orders from others that whole time, I never learned how to formulate my own thoughts. As a result, I became really insecure as an adult. I was always so worried about what people thought of me. If that sounds like you and you want to fix this issue, you have to be able to think for yourself. Make time to reflect and start defining things that matter to you. If not, then you'll come across as a pushover and people won't respect you. I know it sounds obvious, but in order for you to get what you want, you have to know what you want first. Again, that's why you have to figure out what your core values are. And when you do, you'll have a much easier time setting boundaries. You'll know exactly what to say yes to and you won't feel so guilty whenever you say no. To give you an example from my own life, health and fitness matter a great deal to me. I make it a priority to track my calories and maintain a healthy lifestyle. That's why I have no trouble saying no when people ask me to go out drinking with them and party all night long. Because I know what's important to me, I don't succumb to peer pressure that easily. It doesn't bother me one bit when others make fun of me for my decisions. At the end of the day, when you align your actions with things that matter to you, you'll improve the way you see yourself. Not to mention, having clear boundaries will prevent you from feeling overwhelmed and burnt out. You'll be able to protect your time and energy because you won't be wasting them on things that you don't care about. But if you're struggling to do that consistently, there's something else that you need to keep in mind. We'll talk about that more in my second tip. To illustrate my point, here's another quick story. When my family and I immigrated to Canada back in 2003, I had a tough time assimilating into my new environment. That was actually the first time in my life that I've ever seen so many white people. Back then, I had really bad social anxiety and barely spoke English as well. In fact, at that moment, I was ashamed of my ethnicity and often wished that I was somebody else. That's why I was easily intimidated by others and rarely ever spoke up at any event or gathering. To avoid embarrassment and rejection, I often just stayed in. Frustrated with my situation, I decided to look more into it. That's when I got into self-development and learned the tools that I needed to manage my thoughts better. If you can relate to what I've been through and you want to improve your situation, you have to be mindful of what you're putting your attention to. As the saying goes, comparison is a thief of joy. That's why you'll want to avoid doing that as much as possible. Instead, make an effort to celebrate yourself. You can do this by thinking more about your wins and accomplishments. And for me, that's exactly what I did. I made a conscious effort to remind myself of all the amazing things that I've done so far. After doing that for a while, I started to believe that I was actually someone worth getting to know. My self-doubt eventually dissipated and I began to value my own perspectives. Again, by reminding yourself of your wins and accomplishments, you'll become more self-assured. But if you want to become less affected by people's judgment of you, there's something else that you need to know. And my third tip will go into this in greater detail. In a society that puts a lot of emphasis on being loud and outspoken, it's easy to feel inadequate if you don't naturally exhibit those traits. In fact, this is a common issue that I see a lot with our clients in our social skills coaching program. Most of them tend to be the quiet and reserved type. That's why they make the mistake of assuming that there's something wrong with them. As a result, they compare themselves unfavorably to others, which makes them feel like they're not good enough. But contrary to popular belief, introversion is not the same as shyness or social anxiety. It's a personality type, just like extroversion, and it's definitely not a character flaw. That's why it's so important that you develop self-awareness. To help you get started, take a moment to reflect, get some writing material, and schedule some time to get to know yourself more. You can do this by making a list of your strengths and weaknesses. For example, if you're an introvert, then you know that you were charged by spending time by yourself. You prefer having one-on-one -on -one interactions over large social gatherings. You're also someone who's observant, introspective, and a good listener as well. As you can see, there are a lot of good things about your personality type. 
You just have to take the time to know what they are. By doing so, you'll feel more comfortable in your own skin, which will make you feel more grounded in any social situation. By the way, if you're tired of struggling socially and you want to learn more about our social skills coaching program, I'd love to connect with you. Book your free consultation today by going to socialconfidencemastery.com. That link is also available in the description below. That being said, if you want to stop feeling left out, there's something that you need to realize. This leads to my fourth tip, which I actually learned the hard way. To explain to you what I mean, let me share a small secret with you. I'm a bit embarrassed to admit this, but back in high school, I was kind of a loser. On top of being short, I was also overweight and had really bad acne on my face. I was no Prince Charming, that's for sure. Needless to say, girls weren't necessarily throwing themselves at me. Other guys weren't too keen to be seen hanging around me either. As a result, I rarely got invited to any house parties and get-togethers. This made me feel unwanted, which negatively affected my self-perception. Fast forward to today, that's no longer the case. Because I work really hard to improve myself both internally and externally, I was able to change my situation. I got in shape, updated my wardrobe, and improved my communication skills as well. These days, I'm really proud of the person that I've become. I feel good about myself, and I have amazing relationships around me. But despite my apparent transformation, the people that I knew back in high school don't seem to acknowledge that. In fact, they still treat me like the old version of myself. And that's the reason why I've removed most of them from my social media. If you can relate to what I've been through, you have to reevaluate your relationships. Remember, you become the average of the people you spend the most time with. That's why you have to be mindful of the company that you keep. My advice for you is to distance yourself from anyone who undermines your sense of self-worth. Do everything that you can to get rid of toxic relationships in your life. If not, then it'll always hold you back from becoming the best version of yourself. That's why it's so important that you learn how to be more outgoing. When you know how to interact with people effectively, you can be more selective with who you spend time with. As a result, you'll be able to make friends more intentionally and build a quality social circle. At the end of the day, pursuing your goals become much easier when you have like-minded individuals around you. To help you out, I made a free cheat sheet that will show you how to approach and talk to anybody. You can download a free copy by going to socialconfidencemastery.com. That link is also available in the description below. That being said, to make everything we've talked about more concrete, you need to realize something. And my fifth tip, we'll dive deeper into this. You see, before I learned how to overcome my shyness when I was younger, I was a very insecure kid. I just didn't know how to make myself feel better and was also my own worst critic. In fact, I would often beat myself up mentally and would speak to myself in a very demeaning way. That's why I relied on others for validation because I wasn't giving it to myself. And because I was desperate for connections, I came across really needy during my interactions. As a result, both my dating and social life greatly suffered. I mean, let's get real here. Who wants to be around someone who doesn't feel good about themselves? That's why if you want to succeed socially, you have to prioritize your own needs. Keep in mind that the people around you act as a mirror. How they treat you is a direct reflection of how you treat yourself. In that sense, if you want to have a good relationship with others, you need to have a good relationship with yourself first. When I finally internalized that perspective, that's when I started doing things that nurtured me. For example, I developed a daily practice of meditation and journaling. I took the time to reflect and process how I'm feeling at any given moment. As mentioned before, I also started going to the gym and making better food choices. Doing all these things made me feel incredible and it raised my sense of self-worth. And because I valued myself more and more, other people started doing the same as well. Again, to create quality connections with others, fill your own cup first, and prioritize your own needs. But if you want to create quality connections in your life, you have to be able to put yourself out there more consistently. Watch this next video if you want to learn how to be more socially confident. By the end of it, you'll be able to interact with people with ease, so make sure you check it out.